Previously at the Bolt and the Current Full. I now pronounce you Ballast and Dammiload. You don't treat me the same since we married. It's not true. Nothing changed. First of all, you bulged. And the last time we were plugged was 10 months ago. I can explain. It will be the ESR meter to speak. Yo, what's up? And now who the hell is he? He is so nice with me. Yeah, as long as you stay in the 5 volts rail. Honey, can I bring a friend? I want to do a free phase. Sugar Cupid, can you get me a map? Uh, sure, I'll get it. Uh, along the cigarettes and milk right now. These definitely wasn't specified in the datasheet. So I was watching videos about the homemade Variax and watching those videos I realized that maybe making a Variax would be a bad idea uh, or because it's too complicated or maybe because it would come up bad. But why not making an adjustable inductor like this, like a Variax? And in fact I made this thing based on a ferrite ring inside it and it has a fairly deep adjustment of the inductance. It's decently insulated for a high voltage, fairly high voltage, and it's good for a lot of frequencies, also fairly high frequencies. Yeah, I know this thing is not the most useful thing ever, but anyways, I think it's neat. So what is this thing composed of? Well, there's the winding that you can perfectly see, the winding is wound around this type of ferrite. This is probably a standard type because I have four of these and they come probably uh, from uh, different devices. Anyways, this is probably an high frequency mixture and this is good because this way the inductance will not skyrocket. And the ferrite on uh, this thing is also insulated with some plastic rings. And there are like uh, 60, uh, I'm not sure, turns of uh, 1 mm copper wire. The winding is dipped in epoxy resin to make a smooth surface for the brush. And the outer edge is filed with the sandpaper to make the contacts. The brush is a fairly big brush, probably coming from a, uh, an AC motor. And it's sharpened to make some sort of fine tip. And this is good and bad at the same time because it's good because it would probably uh, select just one turn, but it's bad because uh, there are some gaps in the epoxy and sometimes it stops in a spot that it's not uh, conducting. Anyways, the brush is kept pressed by a pen spring. There's this aluminum holder here that I formed, this uh, iron arm here that is soldered, with a nut, there's a bolt in the middle, a knob, and these three are the outputs of the Variac. Okay, let's try this thing. Now we have this circuit here. It's just a simple uh, oscillator made with uh, an inverting chip and a pair of small capacitors. We have our variable inductor. We are using just two contacts of it. There's a multimeter that reads the frequency. It's powered at 9 volts and drawing like nothing. Okay. And now we have a frequency of like 170 kilohertz. Let's crank the frequency. More. 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 600 kilohertz, 700 kilohertz, 1 megahertz, 1 1.2, 1.4, and we are at limit. If I push it more than this, the inductance goes too low, and also the winding acts as a really steep step-up transformer. So the capacitances on this spot here are too high, 
compared to what's needed so it goes crazy if I put it like this as you can see maybe okay Phew. better not doing this okay one point four and past megahertz let's go down And we are at minimum. And you can actually use it as Variac, but you need an high frequency. In fact, I'm using here this driver that is now set at like 50 kHz to drive our Variac on the two ends. There is a light bulb on the output. The driver is powered at 31 volts DC to have like 12 volts uh, RMS on the light bulb. Let's see. Yeah. It's a 50 kilohertz Variac. Yeah. So thanks for having watched my video and yes, smaller is better.